Throughout history, coding and decoding messages has fueled wars. Take World War II. Mathematicians cracked German code created by a machine called Enigma. It's the greatest encryption device in history, and the Germans use it for all major communications. Fast forward to Arab Spring. How did protesters organize safely? Many use something called encryption. But that's also the same way terrorists might work together to plan a major attack. The whole idea is to make your messages secret. Encryption jumbles words into random numbers, letters, characters. The words only decode for the person who's meant to read them. It's this technique that sparked debate at the highest levels of government, because the same tech that helps the good guys also shields the bad. And that tech is going mainstream. At the center of it all, this guy. We're out of food, <laughs> honestly. And the means to cook it? Yeah, we're out of stove fuel. I caught a fish today. His name is Moxie Marlinspike. It sounds made up because, well, it is. He's a world-renowned hacker, and he's obsessed with your privacy. He won't tell you where he's from or really anything about his past. But everyone, from secret agents to whistleblower Edward Snowden, looks to what he has to say on one topic, encryption. If I share photos online with my friends, my intention is to share it with those friends. It's not to share with like, you know, Twitter the company or Facebook the company or the government. Moxie built an app called Signal that makes encryption easy to use. His tech is also used by WhatsApp, the messaging service owned by Facebook. He might be a private guy, but his work is now in the hands of millions. It's actually the most popular messenger in the world. Now when people communicate with each other, those messages that they send are encrypted all the way from their device to the recipient's device. So nobody in between can see what they're saying. It's making it easier than ever to protect yourself and harder for law enforcement to crack down, spurring conversations like these. All of our papers and effects, all of our communications will at some point be covered by strong encryption. That will have profound consequences for law enforcement. Where this is headed is towards proposals for some kind of stockpile of encryption keys. I think this proposal is a big time loser. I lean probably further in the direction of strong encryption than some do, but I am sympathetic to law enforcement because I know the kind of pressure they're under to keep us safe. Chris Inglis spent decades fighting terrorists. He was a deputy director of the NSA and watched as the bad guys became more technically sophisticated. Encryption is one of many ways that an adversary, whether that's a, a criminal, a terrorist, a rogue nation, one of many ways that they might use to hide their activities. And I saw dozens of times, more than that likely, across my career, where that in fact was an obstacle for us. Some in Washington want the ability to access encrypted conversations if there's reason to think there's a threat. Think of it as asking for a key to the locked door. I don't think you want to stamp out encryption technology. The question is, um, do, do we then try to provide some exceptional access to technologies of that sort by building in a front door under the bright light of the rule of law? For Inglis, the answer is yes. But to Moxie, that's just not possible. They're not capable of managing those secrets. You know, like they're getting hacked every day, you know? And so um, it's, not, it's not realistic to think that if they have like the key to the kingdom that they're going to somehow be able to simultaneously use it and keep it safe from, you know, China or random hackers or other nation states. Some folks in Washington want Silicon Valley to build secure solutions. It doesn't look like Moxie's going to be the guy for that. He plays by his own rules in a new era where tech drives the good, the bad, and in this case, the policy. We're at a moment in history where it's mostly possible for us to sort of ignore the policy discussions that are happening instead of like asking people to change the law or to change their surveillance practices or whatever. Um, we can just do it ourselves. 